Hello, I'm the Media Desk, and welcome to Comedy Critiques. And, um, uh, you may have noticed that I got a new place now. And I think I did pretty good for myself. I got a bathroom back there, I've got a walk-in closet over there, and I've got a sweet-ass view of the- Jamie! <sighs> Mom said dinner's ready. Sophie, tell Mom I'll be a couple of minutes. I'm shooting my show. Just come now, or I'm gonna tell the family that you don't love them. Will you just go? Uh, right. Anyway, I want to talk about something different for a change. A play. One that's simply titled Endgame. Endgame is a production that was made by Samuel Beckett in 1950. This production is directed by Andrew Upton of the Sydney Theatre Company and stars Hugo Weaving. The play is over now, but I want to throw my own opinion out there even this late in the game. No pun intended. Because I haven't seen a lot of people with the same one that I do. The play is about two guys. Ham, played by Hugo Weaving, and his assistant, Clove. It's supposedly after the apocalypse, and the two are residing in a bunker. So the play goes through a day in their crazy lives, with them bantering with each other, and talking with his reanimated parents who are kept in separate barrels. Hey, it's not called absurdism for nothing. With Ham pushing them all aside with his selfish behavior, until he has nothing left but his own misery. The most interesting aspect about the play is that it was translated by Samuel Beckett himself, from French. And... You know, he's a really smart guy for doing that, and I really respect him for it, but... This has all the aspects of an absurdist art house piece that just came straight out of France. Alright, time for some fun definitions. Endgame is the last part of a chess game where there are very few pieces out left, and there are very few options to take. And... Man, this is not an appropriate title, because this is probably one of the most drawn-out, long, boring experiences I've ever had in a theater. The play advertises itself as saying that nothing is funnier than unhappiness, and it's kind of true. I mean, most comedy does derive from misery, so maybe this is going to be some sort of like witty blackadder kind of thing with some dark humor to it with some witty rapport and fast uh, dialogue between the two. No, not really. I mean, it tries, but it really doesn't succeed. A lot of the comedy is actually really slow. There's no talking in some parts, and when there is, it relies very heavily on repetition. I mean, this was amateurish comedy writing, like the kind of thing my university drama club would put out. And yes, the subject matter is dark, but the actors play up this exaggerated, witty back and forth between characters, and the writing just isn't strong enough to be able to back it up. I mean, the worst thing a comedy can be is if it's too long, and if you're just leaving the audience hungry for something that's funny or interesting. And this play has both of that. And throughout the play, Hugo Weaving keeps blowing this whistle, and the sound that it makes is so... painful. It's so painful to listen to, and... To be fair, this is a physical whistle that he's blowing into, so it's very hard to control, but it's still just so... sharp. So sharp. There was one part where Claude wanted to get this idea going through his head, so he started to run around 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 the room in this hunchback position, and that scene... That scene was so painful and went on for so long that I was just praying, hoping that maybe there'd be something interesting. I was looking at Hugo Weaving going, please just do something interesting, please do something to grab my attention. And he kind of did. He kind of did. Whenever there was something going on, Hugo Weaving always had like some lip movement or some sort of twitch of the hand, like despite being blind and... That's something that I really liked about the guy. It showed that he was very active. It showed that he was really getting to this character. And, yeah, he was really good in that. Like, even though when I first saw him, I didn't recognize him. Because his appearance in the poster actually looks different than how he does in the play. And when you actually do see him for the first time, he actually sounds a lot like uh, Drunken Blackadder mixed with uh, Captain Rum from that uh, bit of Blackadder with the ships. The other actors I thought did pretty okay with what they had to work with. Like, the guy who played Clove, like, he was fine, I guess. They didn't really give him that much to do. Actually, they gave him plenty to do, just much of it wasn't enjoyable. Um, and even the guys who played the parents, uh, the dad played by Bruce Spence, they were okay. Uh, actually, story time. Uh, when my dad and I went to go see this play, um, he told me all about uh, Bruce Spence, because I hadn't heard of him before. And he's this really good, talented uh, character actor 
who's been in uh, Mad Max, uh, the Star Wars prequels, Lord of the Rings. Uh, so that's a good thing to keep an eye out for if you ever want to go see this play. Like, I guess you can't now because it's done, but if you did see it and then you didn't recognize it, and that's who he is. But he wasn't advertised that much in the performance. I mean, not actually Hugo Weaving, of course. Now, a lot of people like Samuel Beckett's work, like uh, Winning for Gatto, uh, Happy Days, After Without Words, and this. Because of the level of layers that the writing can bring out with so little going on. And that's fine. So the reviews I've seen for Endgame, like this one from uh, timeout.com, which is the first one you see on, the, on Google, uh, it says... Beckett's version of human existence is so absurd that audiences and actors are constantly tempted to throw their hands and dismiss it as, well, absurd. Uh, but Upton's crew managed to stick with it faithfully, almost lovingly if that's possible, at every moment. Well, you better call me one of those dumbasses that want to throw their hands up in the air because I just thought that this was degrading. It felt less like an interpretation of the human experience and more of just how much the critics and even some audience members will eat up if some artsy director's name is on it. No matter if it's going to be, you know, entertaining, they just want something that's going to be thought-provoking and what they think is going to be meaningful and new and they've never seen it before. Like. The same thing happened with the movie Cosmopolis. Like, critics just ate that up because it had Cronenberg's name on it and it was such a risk for him to take when audiences just found it boring. I mean, I find textbooks informative, but I don't read them for the stories. The play reminded me a lot of the movie Jerry, the one about the two guys that are just walking through the desert. And everyone thought that that movie was pointless and tedious, but they also thought there was a small group of people that thought that there were a lot of level of layers to it because the directors claimed that he was inspired by video games because that's all you do and that is walk around. And I feel the exact same way with Endgame because of the fact that it was made intentionally pointless. That's the most frustrating thing about it. I never thought that there was anything about this play to make me give a shit about what was going on or what was going to happen to the characters. And it just keeps dragging on without any idea about when it would end. And the fact that this is a style that people have been respecting for years and has been going on for years, it just... Oh! Oh, it just frustrated me. It really did. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you like this style of play and performance, you'll knock yourself out. But I just didn't feel like there was anything for me to enjoy about it. I just can't find the joy in a play whose main purpose is to have an audience sit down and contemplate the deeper meanings of the themes and trying to understand what it's trying to say about life and it's the human condition, stuff like that, with nothing but slow-paced choreography and repetitious dialogue to carry it and to back it up. I couldn't relate to any of the characters, and since the play is mostly focused around trying to develop them and have them as, like, vehicles for the themes, it completely fails that because I did not give a shit about anything that they were going to do or what was going to happen to them. I just wanted to end. I mean, I can understand why people like this. I really do understand it. I just don't. I mean, being stuck in the same room for two hours with the same four people is just is going to be a tedious endeavor anyway without something else to keep you occupied. And, yeah, I'm just not the right audience for absurdism. I don't regularly watch absurdism plays, so I am not the target demographic for this. Clearly not. So, final verdict. If you're like my dad and I who want to go see this play for the star power of Hugo Weaving, then... This is not going to be the performance for you. It you probably feel like you're going to be trapped watching this play that you didn't you didn't expect to see coming, and you won't be able to leave without feeling frustrated. But if you like Samuel Beckett and you want to see this play to ponder about its hidden meanings of life and human existence, then this might actually be a good experience for you. That is, if you're extremely patient and can get through the obnoxious and pretentious bits without any qualms whatsoever. All right, that's about all I got to talk about. Uh, this is Duck. This is kind of a different uh, video for me to make. So if you guys like this, then leave a comment for me down below. And hey, if you like this play, then leave a comment down below explaining uh, why. Because I love to hear about why you like it and just to find out what the general opinion is. And as always, I'm the Media Dusk and... Oh shit, Mama, it's spaghetti for dinner!